Hi, welcome to the Yarn and Yarns YouTube channel. My name is Angela. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Rainbow Ange, and all of the other places that you'll find me on the internet should be linked in the description box below. Here on the channel, as always, you'll find me chatting about my adventures in spinning and crochet and knitting. So thank you so much for joining me, spending a little bit of your time with me this week. I really do appreciate your company, whether you are here for the first time or you have visited many times. It's Sunday when I'm recording here uh, at the moment and it's a beautiful blue skies day here in South Wales. I live in a little town called Penarth just outside of Cardiff and we're right on the coast um, in South Wales and James and I James is my partner. I live here with my partner and my little cat, Newt. And uh, James and I have been out for a lovely walk down the front this morning. It was very busy uh, down on the lovely little pier that we have here in Penarth, and rightly so, because it's a beautifully warm day. Um, I'm sat in my craft room now and I keep looking up because I have a window just above me and I've got the window open for a nice little bit of breeze because it's lovely and warm today. Um, I have had my little injection of fresh air so for the rest of the day I shall be um, cozying up and planning uh, what I'm going to be working on for the week to come. That's enough chat about what's going on here, um, time to get into the content of the episode. So I think today I'm going to start with a bit of crochet. I've not had a ton of time for crochet this week I have stuck to my little daily goals that I made for myself for the most part. Um, that included adding a row a day to my granny stripe blanket. And if you've joined me for the last few weeks, you will have seen that blanket in progress. So I'm not gonna show you that today because it hasn't grown a huge amount and I don't want you to um, just roll your eyes and be. <laughs> Angela, do you need to show us that again? Uh, because we all know what a granny stripe blanket looks like. Um, I will show it a few more times as it grows, um, but I think it needs to grow a little bit more before that makes another appearance here on the videos. I had planned on dragging out another one of my older crochet um, whips, but that just didn't happen. And um, there's no excuse really, I just didn't get round to it. Um, instead, I, even though this is meant to be my week of working on some of my older whips, I decided to swatch for something new. <laughs> Hey, if I can't break my own rules, then, you know, <laughs> life's pretty dull, isn't it? <laughs> These are self-imposed rules, so they don't really mean anything. And I've only done a, a wee teeny little swatch, so it's not like I spent a lot of time working on this. Anyway, uh, so the project that I have been swatching for is from the latest issue of Pom Pom Magazine. Uh, this is the botanical issue. And the project is called Water Clover. And if you watch um, some of the big podcasting uh, channels here in the knitting community, you may have already seen uh, this mentioned because I know a few of the big podcasters have picked this out as a project that uh, they liked uh, from this particular magazine. So here is the Water Clover. It's a really pretty crochet top. Um, and the original sample is made from Kelbourne Woolens Mojave, um, which is a cotton linen blend. I don't have easy access to that yarn. I know there are a few places that sell it here in the UK, um, but I thought I'd have a little look around my shop to see if I could find anything uh, that I might be able to substitute. And for anyone who might be uh, popping by for the first time, I run a small bricks and mortar yarn shop um, called Yarn and Yarns, the same as the channel, and um, the links to where you'll find um, the shop online are down below as well. Um, so I came across some uh, Peyton's cotton four ply in the shop. Um, the Kelbourne Woolens is listed as a sport weight yarn. Um, it's a 60% cotton, 40% linen, um, but this uh, is a 100% cotton, uh, but it comes out about the same meterage per gram as the Kelbourne yarn. So I thought I'd have a go at swatching with this yarn. I went to start the swatch and um, I was looking for a ball of yarn that I'd bought home in the colour that I want to uh, make the water clover top in. And I couldn't find it. I searched high and low, I swear. <laughs> 
but I did find another ball of the paintings for pie that I'd brought home for another project that never came to fruition. So I started my swatch um, in that yarn. So this is not the colour that I am intending on making the uh, top in. Um, so the colour that I started to swatch in is this really, uh, really fun, bright, vibrant red colour. So as you can see, my swatch is not very big. I swatched in the round because the project is worked in the round up until the armholes and then you split and work the back and front separately, I think. Um, so yeah, I haven't quite completed the pattern repeat. There's an eight row pattern repeat. Yeah, I popped this, uh, it was a bit tricky to show you. So I've popped this um, on a piece of paper um, just to show you the uh, sort of stitch pattern. And I think you can see I've more or less got one of the flower uh, repeats that you could see um, in the top um, in the photograph from Pom Pom. Um, I'm pretty much getting gauge uh, with the recommended hook size and the recommended hook size is a mere 1.5 millimeter hook. So it is teeny tiny. My camera's, well, my phone's not gonna focus on that, but have a 1.5 millimeter. I didn't own a 1.5 millimeter and neither did I have a 1.5 millimeter in the shop. I had every size but. Um, so I actually ordered a few of these hooks in because obviously I wanted to add them to the shop stock anyway. Um, I usually use, uh, for in the shop, I usually have Knit Pro hooks, uh, but the Knit Pro I couldn't find in the 1.5 millimeter. So I've actually um, got a Clover Amour, which is a steel um, tipped crochet hook and I thought that would be pretty um, good for this project because um, as you know if you've worked with cotton before uh, there's not much give to cotton it's fairly um, sort of sturdy and stiff and because this pattern is worked at a pretty tight gauge um, I thought that uh, a nice steel top tipped hook um, would be less breakable bendable um, and it seems to be working out quite well so far, although I've only done a teeny tiny little swatch. My gauge is I'm getting one or two stitches um, more to the 10 centimetres than is called for in the pattern, but I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, obviously, cotton does not have too much give and um, so a little bit of extra wiggle room uh, won't hurt. Going back to my colour choice, so I said I searched high and low for the ball of yarn that I thought I'd brought home and I couldn't find it. But of course, I went to um, start recording this video and I pretty much sat on a bag containing <laughs> the yarn that I'd brought home. I knew it was here somewhere, I just couldn't find it when I wanted it. Um, so I am going to go for a really, really bright green uh, for this project, so uh, sunglasses on now. <laughs> this is the colour that I think I am going to make my water clover in. I thought it would be really nice and bright and ziggy for the summer. Uh, so now I've found it and now I've done my little swatch, I could actually get started on this project. Um, I don't think this project is going to grow very quickly. Um, for my size, uh, which will be the largest size on the pattern. Um, I think I need to start with a chain. That's obviously it's a tiny hook and small gauge. The starting chain is 380 something stitches long. Yeah. <laughs> I am not looking forward to joining that beast in the round without twisting it. Um, but yeah, there's no reason I couldn't get started on that. But uh, that's really the sum of my crochet this week other than a few uh, rounds on my granny stripe blanket. We'll move on to knitting next. I've got a finished object and then quite a few works in progress as always. Knitting um, is my main passion really um, and whilst I do enjoy crochet and spinning it's always knitting that I reach for first. So my finished object, uh, for those of you who may have been following for the last few weeks, you would have already spotted that I'm wearing it. This is my Darumi sweater, which is a pattern by Isabel Kramer, and it featured in last spring's issue of Pom Pom. So there's a bit of a Pom Pom theme going on today. And I got it finished and washed and blocked, and I've worn it a couple of times this week, and I love it. Um, I will pop in a couple of pictures of me wearing it rather than me trying to um, awkwardly 
thrust myself at the camera so you can see me wearing it. Um, I took a couple of goofy selfies that I posted on Instagram, so you may have already seen these, but I'll pop them in here. Uh, so yeah, I am super thrilled that I have finished the sweater. I really uh, like the colours that I've chosen. Um, this turquoise really pops and um, I've had quite a few compliments on the jumper when I've worn it um, in work this week. Um, all I had left uh, when I showed this last week was a sleeve, I think. Um, or maybe even just part of a sleeve. The sleeves are finished off with this really fun detail, uh, so you cast off in... Uh, the two different colours that you use up in the yoke. Um, the two colours that I've used in the yoke are West Yorkshire Spinners Wensleydale uh, Gems and the grey colour which is the main body of the sweater is a unknown wool uh, that I picked up at Wonderwool last year from a company called Wool Tops. That's a really nice um, sort of natural mild grey colour and I've been really enjoying wearing this sweater. I did make my sleeves slightly shorter than recommended in the pattern. Um, I am not 100% sure, sure how I feel about that just yet. Um, I think they're okay. I think the sleeves I quite like the length of. Um, I could have done, I think, with making the body an inch or two longer um, because I do feel like I'm kind of tugging it down a little bit as I wear it. Um, but I do have plenty of yarn left. I've got another full skein and some bits and pieces left over from the other skeins that I um, had already knitted into the rest of the top. And it's a top-down sweater, so there's no reason that I couldn't rip out the cast off and add another little bit to the sweater. So I may do that going forward. Um, however, um, the need for a DK weight sweater um, is probably diminishing um, if today's weather is anything to go by hopefully we're in for a little bit of a warmer spell now um, so it's not an urgent uh, requirement that I lengthen this sweater so I may wear it a few more times either now if the temperatures are low enough or in the autumn before I make that decision as to whether I do rip out and add a little bit to it uh, but other than that I couldn't be more pleased um, if you followed me for a while you may remember that i re-knit the yoke entirely at one point because i wasn't happy um with my increases and i'm really pleased that i um went to the effort of re-knitting the yoke because i'm much much happier with how it's looked um my only other um slight concern with the sweater is even though i've only worn it a few times it's peeled quite a lot uh, the gray yarn um, I think you can probably see that. As I say, I had no idea what the um, content of this uh, grey yarn is. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's pilling quite badly um, under the arms where it gets obviously quite a lot of wear. Um, but I do have a gleaner, so I'll take my gleaner to it and see if it settles down after a couple of wears. Um, sometimes um, the sort of looser fuzz will wear um, on your first few times of wearing a garment and then once you um, clean that down um, it settles down a little bit so I'm hoping that will be the case with this sweater uh, but even if it isn't I don't really mind um, pilling doesn't bother me too much um, I just I love wool it's a lovely natural fiber and um, some walls just have this property so yeah I have no problem with it really whatsoever so yeah, my Darumi, that is the only finished object that I have this week. If you joined me last week, um, you will remember me saying that I'd hoped that I may have two finished sweaters this week um, because I'm also working on a pattern called Midori. I'm keeping my Midori sweater in this lovely project bag um, from Lone Larch Designs and I didn't quite make it to the end of Midori this week, but I'm really close now. Um, so, um, Midori is just a, um, a sweater made out of two rectangles, basically. Uh, it's knit on the bias, so you start down in one corner and then you increase up. And every so often you add in these uh, drop stitch rows, which you could probably, there you go, see if I hold it a bit closer. 
Um, so it's mostly garter with a few of these drop stitch and you just increase until you get to the width that you want. Uh, and then when you get to the corner, um, you start decreasing out. So I think when I showed this last week, I had literally just turned the corner. So I was probably up around, excuse these ends hanging out. I was probably up around here somewhere. Um, so I've knit across quite a way um, on this sweater this week. I'm down to um, the last 50 or so stitches, which means I've probably got about 50 or so rows to go and the rows are getting shorter and shorter as I go. This is the second oldest whip that I have on my needles and this coming week uh, I allow myself to work on anything that I like, but I'm so close to finishing this, I'll definitely um, keep on and try and have this finished to show you next week. I have no idea um, how the fit of this is going to come because it's basically just two rectangles that you then join. Um, and I have no idea how well it's gonna wear. It's knit on the bias with a lot of garter stitch. So how well it will hold its shape, I do not know. I'm not even sure how well it's gonna fit me once I've finished it. But um, yeah, all those things um, will be answered over the next few days, hopefully. Um, I'm knitting that I think on four and a half millimeter needles. Um, I'm not entirely sure and I don't have the pattern or my needle gauge handy. Um, I'm knitting these on Knit Pro Symphony needles. Um, I don't think there's much else to say about that. The yarn I'm using is Noro Kibu. I think Kibu is one of their discontinued um, ranges, um, but it's a mixture of 54% uh, cotton, 34% wool, and 12% silk. Um, my colourway is 12A. Um, so, Noro, Noro Kibu. I'm down to my last uh, bit of the last ball that I have in this colourway left. So I've only got that much left. Um, but as I say, I don't have that um, many more rows to go and the rows are fairly short. So I'm hoping this will last me out. Um, but they, there's so many colours in these Noro, balls of Noro, that I don't think if I end up having to add a row or three um, in at the end in a different colour, um, I don't think it's going to be the worst thing in the world might be playing a little bit of yarn chicken to get that project finished. The second project that I've been working on this week are my pebbles and pathway socks. I'm keeping these in a beautiful project bag uh, that I picked up from Frog Peak Creations, who is a Canadian maker. And if you have joined me before, I've spoken um, at length, probably too much length, about my love of moose <laughs> or mooses. <laughs> So I couldn't resist uh, these adorable uh, guys with their um, Canadian flags and dressed in all the plaid. It's such a fun fabric, I love it. Inside this bag are my pebbles and pathway socks. Um, this is a lovely pattern um, by Mars, uh, Mars Smith, who is Hay Brownberry. Um, she has uh, some lovely designs. Uh, she just come out with a new design called the Ritual Shawl. I, I've purchased the pattern for that and I'm hoping to get that on the needles in the not too distant future. Um, but this I think might have been her first design that she released, um, which is a sock design. And I have finished my first sock. Uh, so it's a lovely cable and garter stitch detail. Put my hand in and stretch that pattern out. So there's some cables running up the side with a garter uh, panel in the middle. Uh, it's a toe up sock and I have knit it toe up, although toe up is not my favourite. And I'm using a contrast yarn for the toes, heels and cuffs. Um, I think the original pattern had a um, heel flap and gusset, but I substituted that for a short row heel um, just because I felt that was easier for me to substitute in my second colour. Um, when I last showed this, which was quite some months ago, um, I was here, round about here, where the... Uh, really fun uh, glass uh, stitch marker that I have, little sheepy stitch marker, um, which was a gift to me uh, from Caroline, who is Colourful Creativity. Um, so yeah, I have this week uh, knit the rest of the foot, popped in the heel and finished that first sock. I have also cast on for the second sock. I haven't got um, very far. I have knit the toe and I've just started on the first pattern repeat um, in the main colour. So I'm using two, obviously two colours of yarn uh, for that project. Toes and Cuffs is a yarn from Wendy. It's their Wendy Rome range and 
I knit my twist socks, my, my other grey, I seem to have a thing for grey socks at the moment. Um, so the pair of socks that I showed I think on the last episode as a finished object um, was also knit in a colourway of Wendy Rome. Uh, this one is called Grassmere and it's a really beautiful um, heathered um, sort of purpley um, colour. Um, and there's kind of like hints of mustard and brown um, in this as well and some bluey tones too. Um, so yeah it's a really nice kind of complex colour. Um, I'm going to have plenty of that colourway left. Uh, yeah, I think that sort of shows you some of the lovely uh, complexity of that colourway. Um, I am already planning another pair of socks with this yarn because I really like this colour so much. And the socks that I'm hoping to make with this are called Damson Gin, I think. Um, I'll pop the details below. Um, and it's a lovely um, pattern in a collection inspired um, by the Miss Marple novels. Um, it's a lovely textured sock and the sample of the sock is knit in a colour not dissimilar to this. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping to um, knit another pair of socks with the leftovers of this. The main colour is a Drops um, Fable or Farble long print uh, I've had in my stash for a little while. Um, I've got a few skeins of Drops uh, sock yarn in my stash. Um, I don't think I'll be buying any more, not necessarily because I don't like the quality, but um, I'm not a fan of their um, some of their their practice their company practices anymore. Um, so I probably won't be purchasing any more drops. Uh, but this one is Drops Farble Long Print, colour six o two. Um, I think I have another ball of this particular colour weight in my stash, um, but I haven't gone searching for it yet. And I weighed. They, they come in 50 grams and I weighed this um, uh, after I finished my um, first sock before I started the second and I had 24 grams left. <laughs> so I'm going to try and make this work. Um, so my second sock, um, maybe a row or two um, short on the uh, Drops Farble, um, but I reckon a row or two is not going to make a huge amount of difference when this is on my foot and leg. Um, I don't think anyone will really notice if I haven't quite made it up to the same point um, on the leg in the cable pattern repeat. Uh, it's quite nice. I like the um, sort of variegation um, to the grey, although it may not be the best for showing up that lovely cable pattern. Uh, so yeah, those are have been keeping me company this week. I'm probably going to put those away for the rest of this coming week and try and... Um, finish one of the other pairs of socks that I've got that are a little bit nearer completion than those. I should, probably should have mentioned because I know um, people do and are interested. Um, I'm knitting those on 2.25 millimeter which is my go-to sock needles, magic loop technique, my chow goo um, sock needles and these needles were recommended um, to me by my lovely friend Jen, Jennifer, who is hot diggity you over on Instagram. Hi Jen! <laughs> And these are my absolute favourite sock needles, but um, Chowgu are not the easiest to get hold of here in the UK. Um, there is one company that um, I think will be coming to Wonderwall that usually sells these, so I might pick up another pair of these. Um, I'm just a real fan. They're so smooth and the join is really lovely. Um, so I, um, when these are free, I always cast on um, another pair of socks on those as, as soon as I can. I have a, another sock whip. Um, I'm working on this project in the shop. Um, these are living in a lovely bag gifted to me by Robin who is Medieval Listing. This is one of my favourites. It's quite a long um, uh, drawstring bag and um, perfect for um, socks. And uh, I didn't make as much progress on these as I had hoped this week. So I think I showed these off last week. Um, I'm knitting these for a lovely friend of mine. Um, and she picked out the yarn. This is one of the um, Opal Monet collection yarns. And uh, this one is Woman with Parasol. And last week I had just inserted the waist yarn uh, for the heel. And so I've only knit down um, probably about halfway um, down, yeah, just halfway I've got a little marker in there um, down the length of the foot. I had planned on taking these to the cinema with me on Monday. Um, I did go to the cinema 
but um, I didn't do any knitting. A bit of a bizarre experience at the cinema on Monday. It's a bit of a digression, but uh, this is my excuse for not knitting at the cinema. Um, Monday afternoons at the cinema are usually pretty quiet, as I'm sure you can imagine. And it turns out there were only three people in the showing of the movie that I went to see. Um, I was the first one that arrived in the uh, movie theatre and I took my seat um, and then another person came in on their own and sat directly behind me. <laughs> in the row behind me, in the seat behind me. And then the third person um, who was at the showing came in and sat directly in front of me uh, in the seat on the row in front of me. So there was only three of us in the whole theatre and we were all squashed in like that, which made me feel a little bit claustrophobic. <laughs> I don't mind going to a busy cinema at all, uh, but it just felt a bit odd that um, those people didn't just go and sit somewhere else. And I felt like I didn't want to get up and move because I'd have felt a bit awkward about that too. Uh, so yeah, I was feeling a bit weird and claustrophobic about that whole experience, so I didn't end up doing any knitting. <laughs> I know, it's weird, it's weird, but what can I say? <laughs> um, I'm knitting those um, socks on, let's get back to the point, shall we? <laughs> I'm knitting those socks on a 2.25 millimeter high higher sharps. Um, these are a 72 stitch sock, which is not my normal for me, uh, but this is my normal for the friend that I'm knitting for. Um, she's actually not very well at the moment and has had a little stint in hospital. So I need to crack on and um, do some more work on these because it would be nice to uh, give those to her as a little bit of a um, get well soon. Two more whips. I need to speed up a little bit because um, I'm trying to keep these videos to around about half an hour and I'm already approaching that um, although I think there's quite a lot of um, waffle and me shifting around that I need to cut out. Um, so the second project that I've been working on in the shop this week is a new cast on. Um, one of my lovely customers who comes to my Monday morning group um, was after a new um, sort of shawl scarf for the sort of transitional uh, spring weather and she wanted, um, she picked out some yarn because she really liked the colour, but however she'd knit with the yarn before and didn't particularly enjoy it. Um, she picked out some Juniper Moon Farm Zooey, um, and this is the colourway that she went for. There's a bit of a blue theme going on today, isn't there? Um, this is a cotton linen blend, uh, but it's quite loosely plied and it can be quite splitty. So if I, yeah. So she um, made herself a scarf from this last year but didn't particularly enjoy this experience and actually just wanted a plain um, garter st stitch um, uh, wrap around um, I said that I was if she wanted to buy the yarn I'd happily knit it for her because it's something that I can easily do um, in the shop so I have made um, some reasonable progress on this this week um, so it's a really basic garter stitch um, sort of shallow shawl um, and you start at the narrowest point and work out until the um, shawl slash scarf is as big as you want. I've almost finished the first 100 grams of this yarn um, and it's getting pretty long now I can't really stretch it out this is a 100 centimeter cord um, knit pro zings four millimeters and I definitely can't stretch this out um, otherwise it will fall off the needles. Um, I think uh, I've got ladies who have worked this um, particular pattern before and they tend to use about 150 grams um, so I'm going to start the second ball uh, this week and just see how far I go. Um, I should see um, the lady who this is for tomorrow so I'll ask her how big she wants me to go whether I just use the second um, ball or um, stop after um, knitting through that partial ball um, I guess we'll see um, but the rows are really long now so um, the yarn is going to get eaten up fairly quickly um, so it probably won't get a massively um, more deeper even with a second 100 gram ball uh, so yeah it's quite a simple uh, scarf with a sort of fun little pico type detail on the edges but yeah it's a great project for me to be able to just pick up and put down um, while I'm in the shop facilitating those groups. And the final project for uh, the knitting section is um, I've been taking part in the Gnome de Plume 
um, Mystery Knit Along, um, which is a um, pattern by Sarah Shearer, who is Imagined Landscapes. And she is the designer of the lovely gnomes that I have been knitting. And this is her uh, Mystery Knit Along. So she, she designed a whole new gnome pattern for this knit along. And over the last couple of weeks, we've been having clues released every few days. Um, I'm part way through clue three, so I'm almost up to date. Um, and so I'm going to show you what I've done so far. If you are knitting away on this and don't want to be spoiled, although there have been tons of spoilers all over Instagram, um, then please look away now. Um, the only real spoiler is the hat uh, because the body's just working up um, as you know the same as uh, a lot of the other um, bodies for the other known patterns. Uh, but the, here we are. Here is my progress so far. So um, I have got this really fun hat with a little leaf on the top and I'm just working down the body now of my gnome. Um, I'm knitting uh, this in my hand spun and I spun this up um, with this project in mind. Uh, so the uh, purple is a merino um, sample that I had from I think it was from Barn to Yarn, um, a shop on Etsy. Um, the body is a fuzzling that I had from um, fondant fibre and then the leaf which is also going to be the beard colour um, was another bump of the merino from um, Bantian I think. Um, I'll try and um, find the correct details and put them below. So I've got to the point now where I need to um, stuff out the hat and the body and start decreasing. So I grab one of the other gnomes that I've made. Um, so I've finished the body um, and I'm going to be um, doing this bottom base now. Um, the one thing that seems to be different about this gnome than the other ones, uh, a lot of the other gnomes that I had have got instruction just to stuff like halfway up the hat. Um, but this one says to stuff the hat out fully. So I guess because it's got this fun little leaf detail, it'll be fun to have the hat um, sort of standing to attention. I knit the hat on DPNs and uh, there's a lot of purling involved because it's reverse uh, stockinette stitch and I really didn't, in I, I don't enjoy working on DPNs at the best of times. Um, I The way I hold my needles means that uh, the needle goes all the way down my hand often and I find that when I'm working with DPNs the other sort of tip is rubbing on my hand. Um, I persevered and on this you start at the bottom and work your way up to the point um, I persevered on the DPNs until about here and then I thought I'm just not enjoying this it's taking me ages why am I doing this I switched to magic loop and the last bit flew by um, so I am magic looping the body now <laughs> and the body yeah the body I know obviously this is not as involved as uh, the patterning on the hat um, which has got these really fun uh, sort of leaf uh, motifs uh, but yeah this is flown by in comparison to the hat because I just kept picking up and putting down the hat because I wasn't enjoying the DPN experience uh, so yeah I shall know better for next time <laughs> I, I should have known already I know myself by now but uh, yeah um, it's working up quite fun obviously my um, hand spun has got some uh, you know slubby bits and it's a bit thick and thin um, I spun these up as singles to make the most of the um, fibre that I had because I only had uh, sort of small sample bumps uh, of fibre so I wanted to try and get as much meterage as possible but I'm really enjoying um, knitting with the, the singles yarn it may not be the most consistent um, but it's quite nice and soft and squishy and I'm quite enjoying how the body colour is knitting up it's almost kind of got these uh, sort of stripes going on so yeah I need to stuff out the body and do those decreases and then I shall be up to date and I think clue four should be coming out in the next day or two on to spinning um, this week I have been spinning on my Hlanwen Elk Fibre which is a lovely Welsh breed of sheep and I purchased some fibre at Wonderwall two years ago I think um, along with this beautiful spindle from Spins City UK and um, I have a fancy to knit a particular shawl, the hilltop shawl I think it's called, with this yarn that I'm spinning. So I'm quite happy, I've managed to spin my way through the second quarter of the fibre that I have. Um, I think it's around 20-ish grams or maybe 15 grams of fibre uh, on this spindle. So I need to um, just take this off and then I can ply it with the other um, quarter that I've already spun up. Um, I'm making some two-ply yarn with this. 
Um, so yeah, I'm making pretty good progress. I think I may need to purchase some more fibre, which is why I'm trying to spin through it before um, Wonderwall, which is approaching at the end of April, um, because I'm hoping that um, the same vendor will be there and I can pick up some more of that if I need it. Uh, alongside that, I've also been spinning away on some uh, Rolags uh, because um, I can't just spin natural colours, I'm afraid. I like a little bit of a colour injection in my life. <laughs> so I had these Rolags from uh, Bakewell Hearts um, that I bought when she was dying and she had a little sale. And these are in my basket of things that I wanted to spin through for my make nine goals this year and I've spun through a Rolag and a bit um, on my um, basic drop spindle that I had from Hilltop Cloud. It's my first ever spindle. Um, so yeah, I have not too much to say about that. I'm intending to um, probably two ply this. Uh, there's a definite mix of um, obviously wool and there's some silk bits in. Um, the silk I'm finding a little bit more difficult to spin so if you can see um, where these sort of slubby bits are um, that's where these sort of silky um, bits of the fibre are I can't quite draft those um, in the same way that the um, sort of wool fibre is drafting so the yarn's going to be a little bit inconsistent but then all of my hand spun is inconsistent because I'm just not very good at it <laughs> but I do enjoy doing it. Um, I found this little basket at um, one of my um, local charity shops the other day. Um, I picked it up for, I think, maybe 50p or maximum a pound. And it's perfect for sitting a spindle in. Um, I'm assuming it's probably for a wine bottle or something. I, I don't really know. Um, but yeah, I've got the rest of my Rolags in a bag and the um, spindle in there. So this makes it nice and portable. I can just grab this and move it around the house. Um, depending on where I fancy sitting and spinning. So yeah, that's everything for this week. Um, I don't feel like I've had that much of interest to chat about this week. So hmm, hopefully you found something um, interesting uh, amongst what I have been talking about today. I almost didn't record today because I don't, I just wasn't like feeling my normal chatty self, but uh, hopefully I've still, I've still managed to talk for a long time, so. <laughs> Hopefully you won't notice any uh, difference to my usual videos. It's just I feel slightly different for some reason today. But anyway, before I sign off, this weekend is Edinburgh Yarn Festival weekend and I have been enjoying seeing lots of videos and posts from uh, some of my lovely fibery nitty friends um, who are lucky enough to be up in Edinburgh enjoying the festivities. Um, I would like to make it there one day, although um, this is probably going to sound really silly, but... Um, I was watching some of the vlogs yesterday and it actually made me feel quite anxious because there were so many people there. I just had this kind of like slight panic attack that I, if I went, I wouldn't fit in. I know that sounds weird because I'm not going, I'm not there and I've never been so I haven't got anything to base my experiences on. But uh, do you get anxious with uh, with crowds? I don't know. I never used to. Um, it's just a, a funny feeling that I had. But... Uh, yeah, I'm talking about nothing, so I should probably stop and sign off. <laughs> I just thought it might be worth uh, marking the fact that this is Edinburgh Yarn Festival weekend. Anyway, I think I'm going to sign off. Um, one of the things I love about Sunday is it's my kind of transition day uh, for my personal project making goals. Uh, this week I get to do anything that I want to. Um, so I'm excited to grab some new project bags and plan what I'm going to be working on in the week ahead. I'd love to know what you're working on at the moment, so please let me know below. Um, I'm always interested uh, in what other people have got on their needles or hooks or spindles because, well, I'm just plain nosy like that. <laughs> but uh, for now, I am definitely going to sign off. So uh, thank you so much for joining me. I hope in this coming week you get to do some of the things that you enjoy. And until next time, great big woolly hugs to you all. Bye for now.